Something big is about to commence. Do you live in Atlanta, Georgia, or plan on visiting soon? Are you hungry for the undiluted Word of God? Do you love God and want to experience Him the more? Are you young at heart and ready to make an impact in your community? Do you want to serve God with your giftings? Are you looking for a church that is also a family? Then we look forward to welcoming you to RCCG, The Rock Center, Register online at www.rcctherockcenter.org and follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at TRC Atlanta. We want to thank God for another beautiful day in His presence. We thank Him for um, you know, making us to see this day. Let's begin to thank God for another opportunity to be in His presence. Let's thank Him because it's not by our power, it's not by our might, but it's by the grace that He has given up. Uh, upon us to be here and for those watching online let's thank god for even having the grace to be able to watch this today um, there are people that would really want to be here but they are nowhere to be found today but we want to give god all the glory because he has given us the grace to be here it's not by our own doing we are not better than those that are not here to experience this time let's bless his holy name let's thank him because we know his word is going to come to us tonight Let's thank him because we know that everything that we will be work, we will be hearing today will meet us at the point of our need. And by the end of today's um, 
word cafe would have many reasons to glorify God. We have many reasons to, to, to lift his holy name. Our burdens will be lifted. We will receive victory in his word in the name of Jesus. Let's pray for the vessel that God is going to use to minister his word unto us, that he will not come and speak by the flesh, but he will speak by the revelation of the Holy Ghost. Let's pray that everything he's going to say will be according to the will of God for our lives. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, because we know that this is a wonderful time. This is going to be a good time in your presence. We thank you because you've prepared your son to, to minister life unto us, to minister victory unto us, and victory will be ours in the name of Jesus. Blessed Lord be your holy name, Father. We thank you. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Right now, we would welcome the King of Affair to lead us in today's Word Cafe. Somebody shout hallelujah. I just want us to spend a few minutes to thank God for what he has done. If you are online, if you are here, you are alive at this moment, it is only because of the hand of God. It is only, he said, we are, it's by his mercies that we are not consumed. If you went out and you came back safely, you drove on the highway and you were able to come back safely. You even slept yesterday and you woke up this morning. It is only by the mercies of God. There were many that did the same thing you did. They were not able to tell, even be alive at this time. Some are even in the hospital, sick or in one other situation. So God has been faithful. God has been good to you, to your family. You know, if you've lost anything, it is because of God that you didn't lose everything. So go ahead and give God glory. Thank him for what, you, what he has done for you. Thank him for your family. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. Father, we thank you. We surrender this session of the service unto your holy hand. Go ahead and bless us. Teach us. We don't have a word, for you have a word always for us. Give us a word in season that will bless us this evening, that will lift somebody's soul, that will help somebody, that will touch the heart of somebody, that will minister life to somebody, that will minister healing to somebody, that will transform the life of somebody. Give us a word this evening. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Brethren online here, please be seated and let us listen and hear the word of the Lord this evening for us. Brethren, we are in a very critical moment in time. Very critical. The first quarter of the year is coming to an end. And um, again, God is always speaking. This season we've been talking to us about discipleship. And in line with that, God has given me a word to share with us this evening. And the title of this word is the treats of prayer. Treats, you hear me? The, the type that, you know, I'm uh, the accent is not very powerful, but the treat means T R E A T S. Treat. As in, you want to treat somebody that is sick. So that is the title of this word. It means the treats of prayer. So today we are going to be talking to you about the power, you know, essentially the power of prayer. What does prayer do in the life of a disciple? That is what we have come to talk about. And the word treat there is actually an acronym. The T R E A T S. We're going to be breaking it down this evening so that you understand that prayer is not just communication with God. It goes beyond that. And I pray that this evening God will open our eyes to understand what prayer really is and what God has proposed prayer to be for us. Now, prayer does many things, and we will never have enough time here to talk about all the things that prayer does. But we've selected a few things that will be critical for a disciple of Christ. If you really want to work with Christ, this um, one, two, three, okay, six points are going to be very essential for you as a disciple of Christ. Now, I will start my memory verse from the book of Luke chapter 18, verse 1. Luke chapter 18, verse 1. I'm starting our memory verse with, the, with Luke chapter 18, verse 1. Now, this Bible, the scripture says in Luke chapter 18, verse 1, I'm reading the King James Version. 
He said, and he spake a parable. That means he spoke to them in a parable unto them to this end. That men ought always to pray and not faint. He said, men ought always to pray. This was Jesus talking to his disciples, telling them what men ought to do. Not just the disciples, but every one of us. He said, men ought always to pray and not faint. So again, you begin to ask yourself, if prayer is a communication with God, what am I praying about always? This word always means all the time. You know, it's a very powerful word. Um, again, I pray that God will give us grace to break it down this evening. It's a very powerful word. Say, men ought always to pray. Say, we ought always to pray. And the word, when Jesus is speaking, it means exactly what he says. Always there means praying all the time. But do we have the time to pray all the time? Some of us walk, we drive, we go to the, you know, we do all kinds of things. So sometimes we don't even pray at all throughout a week. Uh, we are lucky that in this church, they have a prayer hour, you know, on Mondays, on Wednesdays, and Friday. Some people, it is only that time oh, that the prayer comes, or maybe on Sunday when somebody is raising a prayer point. But what this scripture is saying is that that is not healthy. Praying Monday, Wednesday, Friday is good, but it is not enough. He said you need to pray always. Always. So, this is Jesus. And again, just to expand the word, look at the scripture in um, James chapter 5 verse 16. James chapter 5 verse 16. We, get, we got an example there of what prayer had done in the life of a man of God. In James chapter 5 verse 16, the Bible advises us, admonishes us, he said, confess your fault one to another. He said, pray one for another, that ye may be what? Healed. So prayer treats. It treats your sickness. It treats your diseases. He said that you may be healed. He said, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. But there are a lot of things you need to look at that in that word. He said the effectual. So there is, effectual means to be, a, a, to be effective. And it, you, it's like counterintuitive. Prayer, is prayer not effective? But this point is saying that it is not all prayer that, that is effective. He said it is the effectual one. And then the two point, third point, second point, they say fervent. So again, going back to the word always. Some of us just pray it and we dump it there. I have already prayed. Uh, you know, faith now. Uh, we believe. But he said the effectual fervent. Fervent, meaning that something called persistent. The word fervent talks about persistent. So the effectual and fervent prayer of a righteous man. So again, a prayer could be ineffectual. A prayer could be not persistent. Then a prayer could be from somebody that is unrighteous. So there are lots of points here that could make your prayer not to avail much. But he said the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. If you look at other versions, I think uh, maybe the amplified version is talked about makes tremendous power available to the righteous. Makes tremendous power available to the righteous. So today, so you can see that it is important from just this point that we've just read that we need to know how to pray. So there is a methodology to prayer Otherwise, it is possible for you to pray and your prayer is ineffectual or not fervent or coming from someone that is not righteous. Now, the important point here, if we look at, open the Bible from the book of Luke, chapter 11 from 1 to 4. Luke chapter 11 from verse 1 to 4. We need to, first of all, understand what prayer is. They say, pray in your understanding. So, the this particular part talks about what you pray about. He command, he said, pray in your understanding. In Luke 1, Luke 11, 1 to 4, he said, and I'll start from verse 1. He said, and it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he, he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciple to pray. So you see the disciples coming here to talk to Jesus. Say, teach us to pray. So there is a methodology, there's an approach to prayer. And he responded in verse 2, he said, and he said unto them, he said, when you pray, say. So prayer is not something you just mumble. You have to, 
you have to, it has to be something that comes out of you. It has to be something that you say out, out there. He said, when you pray, say. So prayer comes with speaking. It comes by speaking. It's not just, now God hears your thoughts, which is good, but in this approach, he's talking about saying, saying it out there. He says, say when you pray. And how do you say? He says, say our Father. So you have to understand that prayer comes from the position of relationship. You are communing with someone that is your father. So there is so you have to have established a relationship. So when you pray, he said, Say, our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. He said, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Then you go on to say, Give us this day. So when you talk about prayer, so if you look at that first point, it establishes relationship. It says, Our Father who art in heaven. And it goes on to praise the name of our Lord. Hallowed be thy name. So, and this is very critical because if you go back to the scripture in Psalm 100, verse 4, it says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and is caught with praise. So, prayer give, give, supposed to give you access true relationship and true praise. True relationship, understanding that you are a son or a daughter of God and that you are speaking to your father and you gain access to the throne of grace through praise. And it goes on and it said in verse 4, which is, it said, forgive us our sin. And this is critical to establish righteousness. So it is not essentially, the Bible talks about the righteousness of men as filthy rag. For every time you go into that presence, establish that. Acknowledge that we are a sinner and pray for forgiveness. He said, forgive us our sins. For we, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Forgive us again. So that is, a, that is again contingent on the fact that you are someone who forgives other people that have trespassed or sinned against you in one way or the other. So you need to understand that for your prayer to cross in, you need to be forgiving your sin. And for you to be forgiving your sin, it means you have to forgive those who have sinned against us, sinned against you. Then you now go on to begin to speak to the things that you want to talk about. So from this word, you can understand that one way that we pray is praying in our understanding, using our own our words, our language to pray. But again, if you look at the scripture in Romans chapter 8 verse 26, Romans 8 verse 26, the scripture also says that we should pray in the spirit. Pray in the, again, listen, I'm talking to disciples, I'm talking about spirit-filled people, I am building, you know, just relying on a few points here that the people I'm talking to are, are people that actually they have given their life to Christ. They have spirit filled and all of that. He said, then pray in the spirit. In Romans 8.26, he said, likewise, the spirit also help our infirmity. Because the truth is this. When we, this is why he said, men ought always to pray and not faint. Because if you are praying always, you would have exhausted your language. What will you ask again? If you are using English to pray and you're praying 24 hours, I wonder what more you'll be saying. But Praying in the spirit helps that infirmity. It helps that weakness because you don't always know what to pray about. I, some, a lady gave a testimony a few years ago that there was a problem in the village, you know, at, at a, part, a particular point in time. Her husband was in the village and there was trouble in the village. She didn't even know. But the Holy Spirit nudged her. She was here. She was in, in Nigeria, in Abuja. The Holy Spirit nudged her and say, pray, stand up and begin to pray. And then she stood up and she began, she didn't even know what to pray. But the Spirit, because she had this very good relationship with God, the Spirit nudged her to continue to pray in the Spirit. And she kept praying in the Spirit, praying in the Spirit, praying in the Spirit. Do you know that as she was praying in the Spirit, God intervened in the people that were attacking the husband in the village. That was how the husband survived that attack. So there are many, she didn't know. It was later the husband called and said, this was what happened. Then it came to her, oh, this was what was happening and this was why the Holy Spirit nudged me to pray. There are many things happening per time that you will never know about. But we have a helper. 
The helper is the Holy Spirit. He's supposed to help you in all things, including prayer. But we they still need your saying for the for Spirit of God to act on. God can't act unless you say something, unless you speak it out, unless you request. That is the thing, that is the, the principle of this kingdom. He says in Matthew 7, 7, he says, ask and ye shall receive. But until you ask, they may be standing by you. They won't be able to do anything. Very interesting scripture when Jesus was Christ standing with Peter. And he was the one that told Peter to come. And Peter came. And when Peter saw the wind bustrous, he lost faith and began to sink. And Jesus was still looking at him until he said, Master, help me. That was when Jesus stretched out to help. Until you know how to ask, you may not get in this kingdom. But again, you may not even know what to ask. That is why the Spirit helps us. He said the Spirit helps our infirmity because we do not know what to ask for. You say we, should, we, should, we do not know what we should pray for as we ought to. But the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be altered. Looking at 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2, 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2, again that script, that word is established in, in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2. He said, for, we, for he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. You may not even understand what you're saying. You may not know what you're saying in the, as you're speaking in tongue. But in the realm of the spirit, you are speaking mysteries. Angels are moving, you know, on that your word. They are moving, doing many things. This was how that woman's husband came back to her alive. Because the spirit nudged her to pray. There are many times the spirit has woken you up in the middle of the night. You don't even know what to do. You don't woke up. Okay, ah, can't sleep anymore. You don't know what to do. That is it. That's the spirit. Something is happening somewhere and they need you to say something to empower the angels of God to go and walk on your behalf. That is the time to rise up to speak in the spirit. Start declaring the word. Begin to speak in the spirit. As you are praying in tongues, sometimes your understanding may be enhanced and you, some words will come out of your mouth that may be the right words to help in counteracting some of those effects. Brethren, we are living in the realm of this. Yeah, you may be in this world, but the Bible has said it very clearly in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. He said, we rest not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual authorities in high places that manipulate destinies of men. It doesn't matter whether it's New York, whether it's Atlanta, whether, wherever you are. The earth, there are spiritual territorial, territorial powers that try to govern and manipulate the destinies of men. But we overcame them. We overcome them by our prayers. That is why Jesus was admonishing us that men ought always to pray. Not faint. I pray that God will give you the grace to pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, apart from answers to requests during prayers, our prayer does tremendous things in our lives. Prayer does the tremendous things in our life. And that's the word I talked about treats the other time. One of the things that prayer does for you is transform you. Prayer transforms you. That's the first T there. Prayer does what? It transforms you. So somebody that is Giving to prayer, maybe you are struggling with masturbation, you are struggling with drug, whatever you do, you're going through things of the flesh. As you give yourself to prayer, after some time, you discover that some of those habits have disappeared. You don't even know when they went. But because you are someone that gives your time to dedicated prayer, before you know what's happening, you have been transformed, and some of those weaknesses that you used to have will just disappear. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. The scripture said, they say, For, But we all, with open faces, beholding as in the glass the glory of the Lord, he said, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So, talking about being in the presence of the Lord in prayer, one thing that it does for you is transform you. As you are praying, the Holy Spirit is there walking around you, removing things that shouldn't be in your body from you and all of that. As you leave the place of prayer, you come back refreshed. Look at our daddy in the Lord in, at 80 something. He's bouncing about. Some 40 year old can't even bounce about like that in this current dispensation. Why? Because he's somebody that is committed to prayer. It's always the presence of God praying and all of that. And in those places, you get transformation. You get treatment in your spirit. You have to understand that man is tripartite. There's a spirit man, there's a body, there's a flesh. 
but it is the spirit, even the flesh, receive strength and energy from your spirit man. So the stronger your spirit, the stronger you'll be able to cope with many things in life. I guess you say if you faint in the day of adversity, why? Your spirit man, the strength inside of you is low. But if you have built your spirit in a place of prayer, even when adversity comes, you will stand because you have, you have a solid rock. And again, the R part of it, in, you know, remember the treats uh, mnemonic there, talk about T-R-E-A-T-S. Now, the R part of it is talking about revelation. The place of prayer is a place of revelation. It's a place where you get a lot of revelation. I get it, my brethren, there are times I've been praying in the spirit and, and all can, I have some issues here and there, even at, in my place of work and all of that, and I was wondering how to deal with them. But in the place of prayer, I would just get ideas dropping into my spirit on how to deal with some of those issues. So the place of prayer is a place of revelation, a place where you get revelation. And if you look at, there are so many scriptures, but I don't have the time, but I'll just talk about a few of them. The place of prayer. Place. Now, if you look at Joshua, let's look at Joshua 7, 6. Joshua 7, 6. I also read up to 7. Joshua 7, 6 to 7. And, and, and the book of Joshua 7, 6. It's, and I read from verse 6 to 7. It says, And Joshua rent his clothes. Remember, this is the story of Joshua. Joshua was the leader. This, this, at this time, Moses has already died. And God has already appeared to Joshua. Remember in Joshua one where God was talking to him, say, you need to lead these people into the next dispensation. But they went to face a particular tiny country and they fell, the, in fact, the, the country chased them out. For the first time, Israel lost the battle. A tiny country, a tiny country that they should have just run over. But they lost to that tiny country. Why? This was Joshua here lying on the ground. If you read from the beginning of that scripture in Joshua chapter 7, Lying on the ground, wondering what has happened. What is happening? We have never lost before. And he was there crying from Monday night. And the scripture said in Joshua chapter 7 verse 6, And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord until the even tide. He was there from morning praying. What is happening here? In the place of prayer, what happened? He and the elders of Israel and put dust upon their heads. Verse Joshua 7, 7 now. Joshua 7, 7. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord, wherefore hast thou at all brought these people over, the, over Jordan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites, to destroy us? Would, you, would, would to God we had been content and dwelt on the other side of Jordan? And if you go on to that scripture, you'll see that God came down and revealed to them what the problem was. You continue. We don't have time to read that. Whole I'll just paraphrase for you. God came down during this time of this prayer by Joshua and God came to show them what the problem was. That one of you have taken something that is a cost. And that was the problem. You know, because God was seeing Israel as a single organ. So the, 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 the pollution by one pollutes all. And that was the, the problem here. And because of that sin by one man that took an accosting, Israel fell. God was not able to follow them to battle anymore. And a tiny country was able to defeat Israel. How did Joshua get this revelation? God, God didn't speak to them anymore after this accosting has happened. He spoke to them because Joshua gave himself to prayer. In the place of prayer, many things that have happened to you that is disturbing your life, you don't understand what's happening. If you dedicate three days, keep yourself away from things and say, I want to commit this time to prayer, you'll be surprised the kind of revelation you will get in the place of prayer. The place of prayer gives you tremendous revelation. And this was how Israel was able to recover again after this major loss and setback. In, their life. in life, there will be many setbacks. But you need, every time you experience one setback, you need to, that setback will take you back to God, not away from God. Now, the situation with men is that every time we experience a failure, a setback, what happened with people going to drinking and all of that, before you know what, they begin to derail, and before you know what, they go downhill on their health, and, and all manner of things begin to happen. But 
every setback in life should make you run to God in the place of prayer. Like it happened here with Joshua, because in the place of prayer, God will teach you what is happening. He will give you revelation. He will speak to you. Brethren, man is the number one prophet of his own life. If you don't know, because in those days, that, that's the, the beauty of the time of the Holy Spirit. The previous time, he spoke to us through prophet. But now, he's speaking to every single one of us by the power of the Holy Spirit. So you need to establish that relationship with God and able to hear for yourself the issues about your life. It will be well with you in Jesus' name. Now, the next one we're talking about is E, which is something else that prayer does. The word E there stands for elevation. Elevation. Prayer elevates you. It elevates you in the realm of the spirit. It elevates you in the realm of this life. It gives you elevation. It gives you power that moves you to a new realm. It empowers you. The word there, E can also stand for empowerment. It gives you elevation. Now, if you look at 2 Chronicles 26 verse 5, 2 Chronicles 26 verse 5, 2 Chronicles 26 verse 5, we're talking about the treats of prayer. I've talked already about the first one, which is transformation. I've also spoken about revelation. Now, the third is elevation. So, prayer does and it elevates you. Now, look at 2 Chronicles 26 verse 5. The Bible said, and this was talking about King Jews, a, a, a particular king in the land of Israel. And he said, And he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who, who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. Seeking God in the place of prayer, the place of fasting, in, in worship, and all of that. What, what happened to you? You begin to get elevation, you, you begin to experience prosperity. Battles that you should have fought, God will come down and fight them for you. People that we are going to contend with you, God will go and destroy. You will not even know. Your life will just be moving forward because many things that should have set you back, God would have taken away. I, I see prayer as vaccination. Prayer, a man that is committed to prayer, God drives many things away from him even before they happen. So you experience divine elevation in the place of prayer. This man, Zachariah, uh, this man, Uzziah, was able to experience tremendous prosperity because he was a man that gave himself to seeking God in prayer, in fasting, in worship, and his life moved forward. So one of the things that prayer does for you is that it gives you elevation. It elevates you in, in the realm of the physical. It elevates you in the realm of the spirit. People, you can, after you, a man giving to prayer, it's not a man that people, winches and wizards want to come and be present in the night. Where will you be? Able to, you're on fire. You understand? You, you, a man that is giving to prayer is a man that is on fire. If you come near him, you are burnt to ashes. They run away for those type of people. People that witches and wizards that are spending their time on, are cold Christians. They don't pray. They don't do anything. They don't start. They just stay there. So I pray you will not be like one of them in Jesus' name. The other point there is A. You know, remember we're talking about the treats of prayer. The A acronym stands for anointing. Anointing. One of the things that prayer does for you is that it, it, you know, when you go to pray, you are charging yourself in the realm of the spirit. Now, let me tell you something. By as beautiful as your phone is or your laptop is, go on and keep using it. Don't put it to the electricity and let's see what happens. It is the same with everything in life. You cannot keep going without recharging in the realm of the spirit. The time you spend in prayer is like plugging your battery to the charger. The place of prayer is the place where you get spiritually recharged in the realm of the spirit. Jude 20 said it very clearly. He said, as you pray in tongues, what happened? You are charging yourself in the place of in, in the place of the spirit. You are charging your spiritual man, you know, as you pray. Now, so the place of prayer is the place where you get the anointing. Now, look at the scripture in Acts chapter 2 verse 1 that makes it very, very clear. You know, uh, you know remember we are talking about the disciple here. Acts chapter 2 verse 1 that made it very clear. It said, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, what happened? It said, they were all in one accord in one place. Verse 22 uh, verse uh, 2. It said, and suddenly there came a, a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. 
in verse 3. And it said, And they appeared upon them cloven tongues like of fire, and it sat upon each one of them. So as these people were one, in one accord praying in the upper room, what happened? There, there was an unleashing of spiritual power that have never been seen before. Bible said, our God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with Holy Ghost Spirit and with power. Who went about doing good things. Why? Because God was with him. That man was a man that was committed to prayer. We don't have enough time. We have dissected some of these things. Jesus Christ was somebody every morning you can see him going to separate himself in caves and all of that. Praying. Sometimes he would, look at that. Before he went to even pick his disciples, he spent all night praying. And he was supposed to be the son of God. Brethren, me and you, there is no escape from this matter. If you want the anointing, there is some commitment that must come from me and you. You know, we have to seek the anointing in the place of prayer. So as you spend time to pray, one of the things that you get is the anointing. So there must be a regimen to your prayer. When do you pray? I get it. Some of us, we eat three times a day, but we only pray five minutes in the morning. The realm of the spirit and physical are exactly the same. As you feed your physical flesh, you have to do the same to your spiritual. So if you're somebody that's eating three times a day, you have to do the similar things with your prayer life. Even three times a day is not enough. There are people that pray, they have regimen time for prayer, you know, and it doesn't have to be some long, gigantic prayer, but it all needs to be consistent. Consistency is the, the thing we are talking about here. Fervent. What fervent you're talking about being consistent. Fervent prayer. I pray that God will give us grace to be consistent in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, because of our time, I'm going to rush, moving quickly to the next two. The last, the, the T there, the next T on the treat is talking about temptation. Res, temptation resistance. That's the word. Temptation resistance. You know? Temptation resistance. Prayer helps you resist temptation. Prayer helps you do what? Resist temptation. Look at the scripture in Luke 22, 40. Luke chapter 22, verse 40. Luke chapter 22, verse 40. And the Bible said in Luke chapter 22, verse 40, he said, and when he was at the place, he said unto them, this was Jesus who, Luke 22, 40. He said, and when he was at the place, he said unto them, he said, pray that ye enter not into temptation. I pray that you will never get into temptation in Jesus' name. Temptation in this life is something that you would encounter. It's something that every man would encounter. But when you pray, you fortify yourself to overcome those temptations. When you pray, you do what? You fortify yourself to be able to. He say, pray that you that you should not go into temptation. That's Luke twenty two forty. He said, and he said unto, he, and when he was at the place, he said unto them, pray that he enter not into temptation. I pray that you will not go into temptation in Jesus' name. Now, somebody that is given to prayer, a lady is coming to tempt him in the office there or something, or the, the, the lady and the, the old one, man or his boss want to be very funny to her. She's a woman that gives to prayer. When you spend time in prayer, God helps you to drive some of these things away that you never even know about. There are so many testimonies on how prayers have helped people, you know, to overcome temptation. And even our Lord Jesus Christ, you remember, he too had some difficult time, but in the place of prayer, he was able to overcome all of those things that would have set him back, you know, even in his own journey in life. Now, the last point because of our time is the last S, the last S, which talk about supernatural strength. Supernatural strength. So prayer is the place. Now, don't confuse this one with elevation. That elevation talks about prosperity in finances, prosperity in your work. But this S talk about supernatural strength. Last S talk about supernatural strength. And it's very clear in Matthew chapter 14, verse 22. Matthew chapter 14, verse 22. Remember the story here of Matthew chapter 14, verse 22. The Bible said in Matthew 14, 22. I'll read up to 25. 20, starting from 22. And it said, and straight away, Jesus constrained his disciple to get into a ship and to go before him into the other side. Now, while he went 
while he sent this, the multitude away, verse 23, I'm talking Matthew 14, I'm reading 22 to 25. Now, 23. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up into a mount, mountain apart to pray. Look at that. He went into a mountain apart to pray. And when the even, now look at how long he has been praying. <laughs> you ask yourself, what is he talking to God about? Okay. In the, when the, and when the even was come, he was there alone. Verse 24. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. Then 25. And in the fourth watch of the night, look at how long he has been praying. You know? And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. I hope somebody may go open all our eyes to see the revelation there. This man couldn't walk on the sea before. Right? Remember, Jesus was not always walking on the sea. When he was baptized by John, was he walking on the sea? He was not there. But after spending this time in the cave alone praying, there was supercharge in, in his spirit. When he came out, even the, he was just walking on that water. Because you need to understand the mysteries behind the stories of men. The prayer did something to Jesus. Prayer here did something to Jesus in that cave. He was alone praying. And by the time he came out, he was supercharged, able to walk on water. May God do wonderful things in your life as you begin to spend time to pray. In the mighty name of Jesus. Brethren, Luke 18.1 is not a joke. You can't win on this earth if you're not given to prayer. I've not come here to joke and just give you scripture. I've come here to tell you techniques of a disciple if you really want to succeed. Prayer is something you need to commit yourself to. You and God alone. Jesus sent his disciple away. He and God alone. That was where this kind of power comes from. People that spend time in the presence of God. I pray that that grace will come upon you like never before in the mighty name of Jesus. The reason why the devil appeared to beat Christian and win anyhow is because we don't pray. We eat, we have fun, we like to anytime you call people for prayer, you see maybe two or three people will gather here. It will not be where two or three are gathered. Jesus, it will be now encouraging ourselves. Don't be looking at the crowd. Uh, where two are just encouraging because people don't want to pray. But if you call for lunch, all expenses paid, fun, or some a comedian, ah, there will be no space because we like fun. We don't want to pray for the power of a Christian. Is in the place of prayer. May God grant you that grace to pray in Jesus' name. Jesus won by prayer. There were many times he too almost gave it up. There were many times that God, in the place of prayer, God had to send angels there to strengthen him in the place of prayer. You understand? Because in this life, there will be many times where you'll be discouraged. There will be many times where you appear defeated. There will be many times when you'll not be, you will not feel like moving forward. But when you spend time praying, you will, you will receive supernatural transfusion and a charge in your spirit to be able to bounce on. May God give you that power to move forward in the name of Jesus. Brethren, I've come to the end of this evening prayer, of this evening word. I'll read a scripture for you as I close in Luke 22, 42 and 43. Luke 22, 42. It says, saying, Father, if thou be willing, now, this was Jesus Christ. In Luke 22, 42, he's saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Verse 20, 43 said, And there, Luke 22, 43, And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, doing what? Strengthening him. I receive now. So, the place of prayer, is the place where you receive supernatural strength. All of you, as you spend time this evening to pray, angels will appear unto you to strengthen you in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody there, you're going through something, I want to encourage you to pray. Spend time in the presence of God this season and you will receive a transfusion of power like never before. And in those places where you failed before, 
you will appear. But this time, the people that may cause you to fail, they will be the one running from you in the mighty name of Jesus. The power of a Christian is the place of prayer. There is no compromise. God does not change his standards. No matter the situation, generation to generation, the standards are the same. I pray that God will empower us to pray as we ought to in the mighty name of Jesus. And then just let's bow ahead and pray even as we close this service. I want you to go ahead and begin to pray and ask God for grace to pray. Say, Father, give me the grace to pray. Father, give me the grace. I know your word said in Luke 18.1 that men ought always to pray and not faint. I have not been consistent in prayer. But I need grace. One of the things that the devil does is that he occupies you with work. So much so that you will not even think of prayer. But men ought always to pray. Why don't you go to God this evening and talk to him and say, Father, I need grace. I need strength to pray. Send your grace to me. Empower me like never before. Let me spend. There are people that used to pray. Some of you here, some of you there used to pray. You know, you know, used to fast. You used to do all these things. But now, even if you fast at 9 a.m. in the morning, your body is shaking. You've lost all of those things you used to do. You are not, you listen, the fact that we, you're in, the, in a different environment does, has not changed the devil. The devil is not born again. The fact that you are now in the U.S. or what, the, the, but the, the devil has not given his life to Christ. He's the same devil that was in Nigeria, in Lagos, in Abuja that is here. They don't change. So you need to be continual in your prayer. And as you do this, this, this season, God will transform your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for answering our prayer. What a wonderful word that you sent to us this evening. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We need grace to be able to pray this season, Lord. Baptize us with that grace. Empower us in our spirit, man. Let us begin to pray like never before. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayer. In Jesus' mighty name, we we'll pray. Amen. Brethren, I want you to give Jesus a round of applause if you are there. Thank our Lord for, the, for what he's doing in our life. Yeah, even you online, please go ahead and give Jesus a round of applause. God has been faithful, he's wonderful, he's good to us. So this is a time where we would, be, before we close, take our time to sow into the kingdom for another opportunity to receive the blessings of God. Remember the scripture, he said, those that sow sparingly, shall reap sparingly, and those that sow bountifully, shall also reap bountifully. It's another time to receive the blessings through the the spiritual um, principle of sowing and receiving. So we're going to be sowing into the kingdom of God. Remember that we're, the church is be, being built. There's also that uh, need there. If you want to go ahead and sow into the building project, you need to do that as well. Uh, all you need to do is to, as you give, you need to write the purpose for which you are giving this evening. I think they are posting the thin methods that we used to give there. I don't know if I, IT has already posted it. I can't see it, but I'm hoping that people online, okay, good, so they can see it. All right, so if you can see the different approaches, these are the ways that we give, you know. There are se several ways you can give. You can, um, you can give by sending a Zelle. You can, you can send online, whatever that works for you. Just go ahead and sow something into the kingdom. And I know that God will open the, heaven, the windows of heaven over you. The, yeah, these are the methods. So we have the PayPal. We have, you can pay by cash. You can pay by Zelle can give something into the kingdom. You know, you're not here physically, so you may not be able to do cards. For those that are here, you can do that. But for the rest of us, you can go to the church website. Additionally, you can send a text to this line, this number, 770-670-6800. Those are the ways you can sow into the kingdom. And certainly, God will visit you with a mighty harvest in the name of Jesus. No man can outgive God. No matter, you only sow seeds. God gives harvest. And I know that God will visit you with a mighty harvest in the mighty name of Jesus. If you've sown that seed, now this is the time I'm going to be praying. I want to pray on those seeds. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to sow into your kingdom. We pray for all of these people that have sown this evening into your kingdom, that you will visit them mightily with a strange harvest like never before in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, go ahead and open the heavens over them and visit them this season in their businesses, in their finances, in wisdom, in knowledge, and in all dimensions of their life, like never before, in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you, in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Uh, God bless you, sir. Thank you for uh, the wonderful message. It has been very insightful. 
learning about the treats of prayer. And I pray that the power of prayer shall rest mightily upon us in Jesus' name. I also pray for you, sir, that your anointing shall not run dry in the name of Jesus. So I want to thank everyone that has uh, taken our time to join us at today's Word Cafe. I want to thank you for those that have joined us physically and for those who have joined online. And we pray that the Almighty God will bless you mightily in Jesus' name. So we have uh, some few announcements. This Friday, April 28th, is our night of encounter. Praise the Lord. The next promises to be a powerful night. And please let us make our time to be there um, on this Friday. We have a special guest that will be joining us, Pastor Benga Oladino. Friday 28th, April, I will start by 9 p.m. Please let us endeavor uh, to be there. Also, uh, registration is ongoing for the couple's retreat. Praise the Lord. The couple's retreat uh, is a special time out for the couples in the house. And registration is ongoing um, from October 6 to 8. So let us make plans. It promises to be an exciting time for the couples. And I pray that as we make plans, the Almighty God will be with us in Jesus' name. So our Sunday our service remains the same. 10 a.m. we we'll meet here every Sunday uh, for the wonderful service. Let us endeavor to be there. We also have prayer lines on Mondays, Wednesday, and Fridays. We start by 6 a.m. Um, it's a time for us to pray, commit our week, commit our days into the hands of the God, Almighty God. And I pray that as we do all this, the Almighty God will bless us mightily in Jesus' name. Also, uh, remember, yes, for May, we are, May is a cool, calm, and casual month. Praise the Lord. The time for us to dress down and come uh, to the presence of the Almighty God to um, you know, just relax and listen to the word. I pray that the Almighty God will bless us mightily in Jesus' name. Follow us on our social media platforms. We are on Instagram, we are on Facebook, we are on TikTok, or we are on Twitter, TRC Atlanta. Uh, please follow us and enjoy all that the church has to give. Please, let's rise up on our feet as we bring the service to a close. All the glory must be to the Lord. For he is worthy of our praise. No man on earth should give glory to himself. All the glory must be to the Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, in the mighty name of Jesus, everlasting Father, the Redeemer, we thank you, we bless your name. We give you all glory, all honor, all adoration. We thank you for the grace to be in your presence this evening, to come share the word, to listen to the word. We thank you for the word that has come forth unto us, the treats of prayer. We thank you for the exposition. We pray, Almighty God, that the power to continue to pray you grant unto us in Jesus' name. The power not to be weary, to remain steadfast in you. We pray that you bestow upon each and every one of us in the name of Jesus. Lord, we commit the rest of our days, the rest of the week unto your hands. We pray that you shall take charge of our lives in Jesus' name. No evil shall befall us in the mighty name of Jesus. Your mighty hands of protection shall rest mightily upon us in Jesus' name. Lord, you continue to do wonders. You continue to do great and mighty things in our lives in the name of Jesus. For all of the programs before the church, for all of the activities, uh, we plan for different things. We pray, O oh, oh Lord that you take charge in the name of Jesus. Your name alone shall be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus. As we go forth this evening, we pray that you be with us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let us share the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. 
Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell mightily in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Do you live in Atlanta, Georgia, or plan on visiting soon? Are you hungry for the undiluted Word of God? Do you love God and want to experience Him the more? Are you young at heart and ready to make an impact in your community? Do you want to serve God with your giftings? Are you looking for a church that is also a family? Then we look forward to welcoming you to RCCG, The Rock Center. Register online at www.rcctherockcenter.org and follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at TRC Atlanta.